Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you exactly what goes on while I'm grinding a cylinder. This will be fully porting a 395 cylinder. Already has the machine work done. It's already laid out. All I have to do is hit my lines, grind everything, shape everything, and finish it up. But I want to show everybody what exactly goes into grinding these cylinders. Raising the transfers, opening the lowers, setting the exhaust. This will be a full start to finish. It takes me to grind a 395 cylinder. Exactly how I do it, what I use, start to finish. Hopefully you enjoy. Got my handy dandy light, put that in the spark plug. We'll start by raising the exhaust. Now when I do these exhaust ports, I try and work the center up first. That way I can keep a little bit of an arc to it. But you work the center of the exhaust port up and then just keep rounding it to the sides. Flatter port will make more power, but you can only push it so flat before you snag a ring. All right, almost up to the line there. There we go, we got the port up to our line now. I'll we'll widen these lower transfers a little bit, blend the bottom. Now when you're trying to remove a lot of material like that, get your cut set and pull it towards you in one smooth motion. That way it can stay, the cutter will stay in, and it, you can't just scratch at it, because if you try and just scratch at it, if you try and just scratch at these, like this, that's when your cutter will grab and run all over the cylinder. So you got to get your cut set in one nice smooth motion. All right, hopefully you can see we widened it up and we dropped the lower just a little bit for better entry angle versus the stock side. So, so we'll match this side to the other one now. That's what I like to do on these 395s. Now anytime you're cutting on the climb side, you want to be very careful of your plating. It's actually a good idea to go in with a diamond to hit your line. Go right through the plating. Because any type of burr can get underneath the plating and chip it up. So to finish our line here, we'll go in with the diamond stone. Alright, now we can grind a little bit more out of there with the burr. That's pretty much where it needs to be.
Just like so. Got both of those opened up. Now I just like to go in and I'll add a little bit of texture to the intake. That's all I do here. Alright, no, no real big dimples, but just a little bit of texture from the burr. That's all we're doing. We're not changing the shape, not changing the size. Alright, now we'll go in, use our right angle, and get those upper transfers done. Now I've got a bit of material to get out of them, so I'm going to change to a slightly more aggressive cutter. Just a little bit more bite on that one. But with these small right angle heads, you have to be careful using an aggressive burr like that. It'll tear the gears up in no time if you let it chatter around too much. So for me, we'll start on the hard side first, which would be the flywheel side just because it's easier to stick your light through the exhaust port to see the other one. Cut, same approach here, get your cut set, one nice smooth drag. Alright, as you can see, that's just a rough bulk adjustment, but we'll use the big one, get to our line, and then we'll go in with the smaller burr and fine tune everything. Let's dump the chips out, see what we got. Well, we're taking some material out. That's why I like these bar mats. They catch it in there, not chasing it all over the table. On the hard side. Get these corners dug out, get everything flowing a bit better. Alright, those are pretty good. Now the actual angle of these ports is just as important as what time they open. How well they direct the charge that way to start the loop effect. Because if you notice, I'm going to put that in there. We've got a pretty good angle on them. Some of the aftermarket cylinders and lesser cylinders, that back wall is pretty much straight across. So that can easily wash out the exhaust. Well, we got those ones set up pretty good. Flip it around, we'll do this other side. I just like to square them up, get all the material out of the corner to really help direct that flow. All right, we got that side raised up. I'll finish the exhaust port, put good bevels around everything, and this will be ready to put back on. All right, we'll fine tune the exhaust now. I just use a split mandrel with some 80 grit. And this 80 grit actually helps me do the final shaping too. Once you use out that little bit, tear off and get to the fresh stuff. 
just trying to get everything clean and smooth. You see? Nice rounded rough. Everything smooth. Blended in nice. So we'll call that exhaust port done. I just leave the transfers and the other ports as finished with the burr. And we'll go in with our diamond ball and we'll bevel everything up good. Now this bevel or chamfer, whichever you want to call it, is just to break the edge. Now a lot of how the power is delivered and how long it holds up has to do with the port shape. With the rounded roof, it's not going to have the snap and not going to have the maximum power that a flat roof will. That round roof helps glide the ring in and out a lot smoother. And then a square one. So ring life will be better with a rounded port. But you're not going to get the maximum power like a square. If your port shape's not symmetrical, then your ring's going to work harder on one side than the other. And that side will have more wear and everything else. So it's really important to pay attention to the shapes. The shapes, the sizes, everything when you're porting these. And these bevels or chamfers just keep the ring happy and safe. And we'll just leave the factory intake because we didn't change the timing there at the cylinder. Now on these transfer ones, I don't bother with a real big chamfer because they're not big enough to really hang the ring. But for a work saw, it's always a good idea to break that edge. Even though we don't think it, this little chamfer that I'm doing right now will affect how the stuff's flowing through the port. But that's only going to be your 0.1% for race saw type stuff. Ideally, a 100% square port with no chamfer, no bevel is going to flow the best. But we can't do that on something that we want to last a long time. Alright, now to finish, finish these edges, I just take a piece of 320 on my finger. And just kind of smooth all the edges we just did. Let the meat of your finger go in and do the sanding. Very important on the exhaust. And there we go. One ported 395 cylinder. We left the intake alone. We widened the lowers, raised the uppers. Then we raised and widened the exhaust just a touch. But that's it. And that's how we do them. That's the full process. That's exactly what it takes, start to finish, to port a cylinder. Most all the cylinders, very similar. Said, good idea to practice on stuff that's not important. But, biggest thing, make note of which way your cutters are going. Try to keep the chatter down. Try to keep firm, even pressure. And make sure you're not changing angles too much. I try and scoop these uppers out to where they have a nice flat roof where they exit. And reach in as good as I can and blend it all back in. If you just come out, change it right at the... If you just change port time right at the cylinder wall, you're kind of defeating the purpose a little bit because you have an abrupt edge that it flows over. But I just want to show everybody... I haven't done one where I've actually ground on the cylinder. This one's a bit long. But it's a good idea to show everybody what actually goes into porting one of these.
right, here's our results. We ended up with 9.5 horse from 7.1. Nice healthy gain. So this shows that our grinding paid off. Chose the right durations, the right heights. This is the same setup as the 395 video I did a while back. But I just wanted to show what's actually involved grinding on the cylinder and share a couple little tips as I was doing it. But these are the results of our efforts. A little bit more port time area, a little bit more duration, a little bit more compression, and a little muffler mod. These are our results. Which I'd say is a pretty healthy bump in power. Nice, broad, usable range. And we didn't push it too far one way or the other. Changing those durations, you can really push the power high, make a super narrow power band, or you can drop it way down and make a saw that just won't wind up. So that's the fine line that we play with every time we port one of these. Choosing the right durations to keep us right in the middle. Sometimes we nail it, and sometimes it takes a try or two. We will be getting into a couple more videos like this. I'll pick some different cylinders and we'll try a couple different things. So leave a comment and let me know what you guys want to see. Do we want to try and make a super low-end grunty saw and see what that looks like versus a high RPM screamer? Or what do we want to do? Like I said, we'll probably use, probably use that super cheap 50cc Zenoa clone that we have. You can pick those cylinders up extremely cheap and those saws extremely cheap and that's something that everybody can learn on adults kids people you want to get interested in something so as long as they're old enough not to eat the screws or the paste then that's a good option for somebody that just enjoys to tinker those cheap saws like that but that's probably what we'll do we'll do some different cylinder testing on one of those Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see. Low-end saws, high-end saws, what does what, how to make power, how to port cheap. Just let me know. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone.